Hi guys, welcome back. So on today's episode, we're going to be introducing to you the brand new car that is joining the Young Cars lineup. So guys, there it is. It is a 2005 Lupo GTI. So all you guys are going to think we've lost our absolute mind. I'm like six foot six. I probably need a hole cut out at the top just to fit, but there's a very good reason for this. Now guys, you're going to think we've lost our absolute mind. I'm six foot six. I need a hole cut out at the top of it, but there's a very good reason behind this. Now, if you're within our age category, you will probably know that when you were 16, 17, this car was one of the cars to get. You couldn't probably get this car when you were 17, 18 because new, I think this car was 15,000 pounds. So back then, um, that's a lot of money. It still is a lot of money. So it's one of these cars that I kind of thought, maybe one day I'll have. Honestly, it's, it's a cool little thing. Now there's a huge backstory behind this car. It is a Japanese import. Now I've got all the paperwork to prove this. I'm going to quickly show you in a second. So this car was first registered obviously in 2005. It spent from 2005 to 2000, I think 14 or 15. It was imported into the UK by the guy who we bought this from. Now, the number one thing I wanted to know is why would anybody import a Lupo GTI from Japan? You know, it's normally the Skylines and other the JDM cars that you kind of know about. So apparently in Japan, they don't use road salt. Now road salt, as you know, is very corrosive. It's not very good for pretty much the lower third of the car. So after realizing this, I now understand why cars usually get imported. Now, so when we looked at the market, you've got a couple of options. You've literally got your bog standard GTIs that have got about 144,000 miles on the clock and they're going for about two to three grand. They've been ragged, they've been modified, and that's not the car that we want. Now, this is the most expensive Lupo GTI in the country. Now, when I tell you the price, one, it's eye-watering, and two, it's probably not as eye-watering because I don't really know all the cars, so to people who own these old school Escort RSs, it's, it's probably pennies. So, as I said, it's the lowest, um, it's the most expensive in the country, but also it's the lowest mileage. So this is clocking in, that's so 2005 car, clocking in at 39,000 miles. Every UK MOT that's ever had is being green starred. Everything's tick, tick, tick. I think the last two advisories were on the tires, but then again, I don't really care because the tires I'm getting ripped off tomorrow. Um, so yes, this car came in at 7,000 pounds seven grand for something that's probably the size of my shoebox. Yeah, it is, it's eye-watering, but from all the people that have already seen this, I've, I've been to a few garages um, just to try to get this booked in for a proper master service. Um, and they were like, oh my God, you bought this car, wow. Obviously, some of the local garages kind of know of us and they know of the cars that we have and they kind of follow the channel. But they were saying the first thing you need to do is get this cleaned up and put it inside a garage and just forget about it for 10 years. Now, obviously, we don't buy cars to store. We're going to drive the hell out of this. Now, going back into the story of the person we bought it from, there was nothing in the Midlands. There was either down all the way down into, Lund uh, into London, Guildford area, Surrey area, or right up north, so Scotland or like the northeast of England. So this guy lives or lives in Blythe, northeast so about 40 minutes north of newcastle um, and here's another amazing fact you, you're going to be shocked for this for the last five years this car has covered 129 miles 129 miles now obviously as a car person yeah it's a cool fact to throw about on camera but it's not actually good for the car so well in fact we drove at almost double that on the way home anyway so we did more mileage in one trip than this car's done in five years so um yeah it's cool we're going to do an experiment with it we're going to do some very tasteful oem plus mods um again as i said tomorrow brand new tires i've got some michelin threes michelin four s's haven't come out on this car so the threes is the most premium tire you can get from michelin so new tires are going on there we're going to obviously drop all the fluid we're going to just redo the whole thing now the guy who's doing our car is going to be well, he's an ex-GTI owner. He loves these cars. 
Um, I think he crashed his, um, <laughs> but he knows everything inside and out of them. So what we're going to be doing is he's going to look at everything. And obviously I've asked him a massive favor. I said, look, just anything that needs doing, we're going to do it. But eventually I'm probably going to put operated brakes, bigger calipers. I just want a bit more stop and power. So as I said, OEM plus, we're going to probably put some Brembo's on or something like that. Obviously upgrade the rims itself. Um, now in terms of the car, it's it's a mint condition ish you know um mint condition to some people doesn't mean what it means to us but for the for the man it was mint obviously to our levels it will have a little bit of the yum cars kind of treatments and specs so um now i'm going to flip over to cameras and i'm going to show you around the car boom i'm on the second camera now so let's take a more closer approach and a further look into the new GTI. Look at this guy, come on. Woo! He's racing that one. Um, so, <laughs> sorry about that. GTI. So I'm gonna talk you through a little bit of what already some of the kind of niggles I can see happening potentially. But basically I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm gonna walk you through everything I've seen so far in the 24 hours that we've owned it. So, again, this will be an interesting one because Look at the wheels. Of course, it is your usual telltale sign from steel brakes, but look inside there. Very orange. Now again, these white marks. It's definitely had some polish somewhere along the line, embedded within the cracks. Again, nothing we can't handle. Now the tires again, like I mentioned already, we'll get new tires tomorrow, but look, first of all, they're brown. And second of all, I mean, the tread on them is fantastic, but because the advisory came up that they were sat for too long, there's potentially cracking. I don't know where they are cracked. So tomorrow, brand new tires. And I'm just giving you a pan again. This is the first time I've ever owned a red car. Let's look at it from there. Whoa. I'm more excited about this than I am about any of the cars that we have. <laughs> it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Now, yeah, it's, it's a small little car. Again, window wipers. I mean, first of all, look, there's a bit of green habitation living there. Easily sorted. But again, there's some stuff there that is, there's a few marks here and there. But just look how dopey this thing looks. So bloody cool. Oh, and also one more thing, a very, very cool thing. So the guy we picked it up from, old school, fantastic. He um, he topped us up a tank of fuel, so I didn't know how much it takes, how much it costs, etc., etc. So yesterday, I went and filled it up with the most expensive fuel, obviously Shell V Power. Cost me, oh, empty tank, I was literally on red. So I just wanted to bring it all the way down just to see. 32 pound at the most expensive fuel 32 quid full tank so it'll probably do us three to 350 miles um, per tank so that's not bad I, it's unbelievable actually so obviously it's a tiny car but just look how cool that is so the plan is what we're going to do is we're going to do oem plus <clears throat> Uh, modifications on this so again at some point I will be obviously I'm getting new tires tomorrow like I keep mentioning maybe new alloys who knows there's definitely going to be a few interior bits that we're gonna kind of handle where we can exhaust wise I'm not sure because again it's a 1.6 I don't want it to sound like a tin can and bah, 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 like this so I don't know but um, few of the things if obviously I'm gonna do a, a first kind of takeover wash like I do just a basic wash I'm not gonna do anything ridiculous on this again I might just give it like a touchless fallout remover for now I'm um, all over the paintwork as well try and get the wheels in the best shape and this is why I just want to do it do I need to refurb the wheels are the wheels going to come up fantastic I do not know because this car has not been touched by me just yet um, I looked at some kind of upgraded lighting units, whether 
I mean, obviously they're going to be the same kind of shape, but whether they have DRLs on them, I'm not sure. Whether I just buy a brand new set or an aftermarket set, I don't know. I need to have a look first at all the offerings that kind of are given to me and Kelly on regards this car. But it's just cool. In fact, let me bring you on an inside tour. Let me get the keys. All right, guys, let me show you the interior situation. You're going to love this. So, let me get in. Oh, so again, plenty of space. I am having to have kind of lean back a little bit. But let me walk you around what we've noticed on the interior and some of the potential kind of mods we'll end up probably doing to this thing. So, again, door jams, they'll need a good degrease. But in terms of the whole. I mean, this is not in a bad condition up until we've touched it. Now, I wanted to keep this as authentic as I could. This has been blown out of the fans. As you can see, these little bits. I've been running the fans hot, cold, everything. Now look, they're even flying all over the car. So uh, it was been killing me not to hoover this, but I wanted to kind of show you exactly the state that the car's in. So again, this is going to get all hoovered up. You could see there's a kind of a discoloration a little bit of um, of the plastic dash. The steering wheel isn't actually too bad. It's, if you look at it, it's not in bad condition. You've got to remember the age of the car. And there's the official odometer reading. So yeah, probably about 39.5 we picked it up at. I may have reduced it by 500 miles, but still, sub 40k car, it's unbelievable. Again, these mats are gonna have to get ripped out, 100%, I mean, they're loose. I'll keep them still for the next owner, potentially, but yeah, I don't like them. Now, the cause for concern, if you look at the rubber seals here, there's white residue everywhere. Now, look, you can see a color change now. It's all over the place. There's some there as well So we'll just have to see again. The seat condition is is not bad Again, I'm being relative for the age of the car It's not bad plenty of back room. See we just fold this down a little bit But yeah, it's not bad at all Could do with the Hoover the general stuff, but gear knob it's gonna to have to get changed. Fantastic entertainment system from 2005. <laughs> but yeah, a compressed air definitely in there. Compressed air in there. We're gonna obviously flush all the AC through here at the bottom. We're gonna obviously degrease it, stuff like that. It's not in bad condition considering exactly what type of car that this is. But I am, guys, I'm super, super stoked for this because. There's going to be so much we're going to like do with it, tinker with it. It's actually quite cool. The car, like the, the car parts like themselves aren't expensive. Again, all being relative, everything's expensive and everything's not expensive. It depends how you look at it. So um, I'll give you an example. The tires I got prepped for them. So again, the Michelin 3s, all around 320 quid. Top the line Michelin's 320, that's not too bad. The service actually almost the same money for that to be fair. So I've asked for everything to be dropped. Um, oil, all that sort of stuff. The guy who's working on it, local to us, he's literally on the corner of our business park. He used to own one of these. He knows exactly where everything should and shouldn't be. So obviously I'm gonna palm him a little bit of cash on the side as well as you always do to keep these people sweet that's a life tip and he i've basically asked him whatever should be there tell me shouldn't be there tell me i want to know everything because we are going to keep the car for many many years in fact we might be the final owners of this car that's the plan currently that's the intention we the car is going to rest with us now and we're going to run it whether it gets to 100k 200k again I'm going to run this to um, two services a year, 100%, oil drop every six months, all that type of stuff. I want to really take good, good care of this car. It probably is, again, I don't know who's had it in Japan. Um, it could have been, again, babied in Japan or it could have been absolutely, you know, driven like in Tokyo, drift type of style. So, I don't know. And this is why I want to really take good care of this car. But anyway, guys, as always, 
this is a little introduction to an introduction to a very very big in depth uh, in in depth kind of a granular series i'm going to take you everything we do on this car is going to get filmed in detail as much information as i know the information that i don't know i'm going to research and try and um, well, I'm not going to say the word educate because that's, that's not what I do, but I'm going to just try to share the experience as much as I can. But just there, Lupo GTI has arrived at Yum Cars. Anyway, guys, I will see you on the next one, and um, I'm very curious in the comment section what you think about our uh, latest purchase. I'll see you soon, guys. Cheers. Bye bye.